<laughs> so who are you? I'm Julie Larson Green. I'm Group Program Manager for the Office User Experience Team. Wait a second, the Office Team? Office, Microsoft Office. There's an Office Team here. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft, yes. They, this Thank is you. my first, well, my second interview because I did uh, the SharePoint guys, which they think they're Office, but. They're this office. is the first time I'm in building 36. Oh, okay. Well, interview. Office is made up of a whole bunch of teams. Yeah. Um, but I'm actually in the Office Shared Group, which is the Office part of Office. So okay. I don't work on a particular application like Word, Excel, PowerPoint. I work on the overall Office system. Wow. And I've been doing the Shared UI for about five years. Um, before that, I worked on Internet Explorer, uh, Front Page, Developer Tools. I've been at Microsoft about 12 and a half years. Wow. <laughs> so that's why everybody said I had to come and see you. You had to be the first interview in, a, in the office building. Um, yeah, I've been in office for a while now. Now, now this video is going to play right after I think Steven Sanofsky shows the world Office 12 at the PDC next week, right? Oh, yeah. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the plan. Are you serious? Yeah, that's the plan. Oh is it, there's going to be a whole bunch of office videos that come up, you know, that come up that day that oh, okay. he gives a keynote. And I bet that the first thing somebody's going to say is, man, they changed the UI. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> I don't think you can't, you, know, you, ha you have to notice. I mean, it's yeah. different. So moving away from menus and toolbars was a, a big deal, a big, long, uh, considered deal. And, and your team is did the research? Tell me about what your what team, we did. Why, why, were you the one who was <laughs> responsible for well, changing the UI? I was responsible for leading the team that uh, came up with what we were going to do. Um, okay. we got. Um, well, we've had really good success with Office. I mean, it's been really consistent through the years. The model has been copied many times. You know, file, edit, view, insert, tool, window, help is kind of the standard way applications work. Um, and so moving away from that uh, had to be well thought through and well considered. And a whole team of people worked on different aspects of it. But the main um, thing that we did is we just listened to customers and listened to what they're saying. I mean, overall satisfaction with Office has been great and people have been really happy with using the product, but you still hear the, well, it probably is in there somewhere. I just don't know quite where to find it. Or, um, well, I feel like I only use a small percentage of the product. I could probably do a lot more with it if I sat down and learned how. Or um, even when we go to usability tests, they'd say, um, you probably know a better way of doing this than we do. So even though they had high satisfaction, we knew there were still problems with them being able to find and use the product. And, Mostly it was around what we thought of as product mastery, like feeling like they really knew how to, how to do what they wanted to do. I mean, the tool is supposed to, the tool is just a tool. The document's the important part of it. So we wanted to rethink how to help people create the documents they wanted to create. So, um, and we were also doing a lot of features in Office 12 that uh, it would have been hard to showcase the power of them using the old traditional model of, you know, a check boxes inside a, a dialog box or something like that. So. Yeah. We started questioning some of our long-held beliefs around uh, consistency and, um, you know, we knew we've had problems with lots of features in the product, people having trouble finding things for a long time. And the old menu system was made for uh, applications that were much simpler and had less uh, features in them. So I think Word 1.0 had like 100 features and Word 2003 has over 1,500 features. Wow. So it used to be you could browse those menus and see all the commands just by dropping down and going across and you kind of understood what was in there. But with 1,500 commands, we ran out of space in the menu, so we had to add task panes and additional toolbars and there started being all these rocks to turn over to try to find functionality. And so we wanted to take it back to, if we were going to start from the beginning and we were going to organize it in a way that uh, would help people understand what the application was all about, what would we do? And so um, we decided to just think about what the parts of Word are that make Word Word, or parts of Excel that make Excel Excel, um, or PowerPoint about presentations. So the first thing we did is we took out all the commands that were not about authoring a document and moved those out into the file menu area. Yeah. So that's how you engage in all your business practices. Um, that's how you decide how to share a document with someone or protect a document. Um, and then that left us the space for you know, things that use the insertion point or things that you can do when you're adding content to the document. And then we change that so it doesn't have to be the same in all the applications. It can help you understand what Word can do for you or what Excel can do for you or PowerPoint can do for you uh, just by looking at the top level structure. So that was the basic Tell me about some of the, idea. Tell me about some of the research that your team did. You know, 
did There's, you sit next to customers as they were using the product or we sat next to customers we did I mean, there's uh, hundreds of different ways that you get the data um, some of it's at your own experience having worked on a lot of different applications or and being users yourself but you also get um, thousands of hours of usability stu studies where you watch people either behind the one-way mirror observing how they work or um, we do these things we call longitudinal studies where we go visit people over time to see how they work over time. We do surveys. Um, but one of the things that's really helped us a lot is uh, what we call um, service quality monitor data. So uh -huh. it's a, a customer improvement program that is uh, completely voluntary, but a large number of people have signed up for it. And it gives us feedback about what features they use in the product. Yep. So we can really get statistically significant data about how people use the product today. And so we can see A what friend features. of mine is in that program. Oh, really? And you basically watch everything that my we friend get is sequen doing. Right? Sequencing data as well as, we don't get the, the document data, but we see what commands they've used and in what order they've used them in. Um, and then we can understand, like, is it really true? So you that? actually know the 10% of features that we're, that nobody uses, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the funny thing is, is uh, all, all the features get used. And so everyone's 10% or 20% that they use is different. So all the features were added based on customer requests and customer feedback. Um, and there's people that want to use more of the features to get better looking tables or better looking charts and things like that. But it's really difficult to find your path through there. And that's why you get that expert down the hall that's kind of found that little path yeah. to making the thing do what they want. And we wanted to bring that power to everyone. So. Now, I, I've seen like five minutes of this. And I was like, Wow, they changed it. Yes. <laughs> what, since you've been doing, I'm sure you've been doing user testing with the new user user experience. I'm sure there's some contra I'm sure there's some people who say, I just don't like change. I'm stuck in my ways. I want it right. the old way. Because I, I know that I've watched software get changed before, and right. that's how people naturally react. Well, Is that what you're seeing, or what? Yes what kind no. of experiences are you getting when people? It's a varied set of experiences. I think the the more um, you know Office, the more you're apprehensive about the change because you already feel like you know and you don't have some of the problems that maybe the typical user has about trying to figure out how to make it do something you want it to do. Um, but we've seen that the, that there's benefits for everyone um, in creating better doc looking documents much faster than they were before and not having to understand all the details um, of all the individual features that. You know, we basically give you uh, all the variable names in our dialog boxes and have you set each one and then we tell the program to go draw that thing. And the new UI, we show you ahead of time what the results of a bunch of different commands would look like and you pick from the look. So can, it's faster. Can you show us some I of this? I sure can. All right. <laughs> so first of all, what... Uh, how far along is Office at this point? Is this a PDC build? Is it, I this don't even is, know. Um, this is a PDC build. So we just finished uh, our last. Yeah, here. I got my power cable. There we go. Sorry. That's all right. We just finished our last um, uh, big coding milestone, and now we're working on stabilizing and uh, getting ready for beta in the fall. Okay. And so this is something we work on for PDC. There's still a lot of work left to do, and there's still things that aren't quite working right, but. Um, it's getting closer to what we're thinking. So here's Word. Okay. So just to kind of recap what I said, um, we across the top is the right menu, uh, insert, yep. page layout, it's a little slow, references, mailings, and review. And so this is the big parts of Word. Um, and there's nowhere else to go to look for commands. There's nothing hiding in a stack of task panes somewhere. There's nothing hiding in a bunch of other toolbars. This is everything that Word can do for you. It uh, doesn't mean that everything's gone away. There's still dialogues, um, and all the commands still exist in the applications, just organized in a new way. And there's so, no pull-down menus. No pull-down menus. We call this area, it's codenamed the ribbon. Okay. Um, and it is a, a modeless way of interacting with the document. So if I use a little magic incantation here, put some text in. You can see that I can still use my keyboard shortcuts like Control A, I'll click in here, Control A, to select the text and then I can use still, the right tab is the place you're going to spend most of your time. It's the standard in formatting 
uh, toolbars that you have today. Okay. And we know also from that data, the customer experience program data, that's anywhere between 70 and 90 percent of all the clicks that the average user makes in the application. So it really is the place you're going to spend a lot of time. Um, when you're going to go do something else like lay out your page, it's a place you're going to work for a while. Um, and so those commands aren't in your way when you're trying to figure out you just get your document written. Uh, so here as I mouse over uh, the different fonts, I can see what it's going to look like in the document. And so I get a live preview of what this, uh, why I might want this to look like, and I can pick one. Um, of course, the dialogue still exists, and I can get to the full functionality that has always been there um, and still there. But the quick things, or the things you do most frequently, are right at your fingertips. So I'll go ahead and insert a table. Uh, what, where did you just do that? Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I clicked over to the insert tab. <laughs> so it's easy to get faked out when you're looking at it. <laughs> well, the insert tab is just all the things you can insert in the document. Okay. Um, it used to be the insert menu, but it had been organized into um, into functionality chunks, what right. we call them, you know, illustrations, links, etc. Um, and then every application has an insert in it. Insert is very important to you know, putting things into your spreadsheets, your presentations, your documents. But each one is, again, unique to the way that the, what's important for Word. So right. inserting here, you can insert a cover page. Uh, we have some pre-built cover oh, pages cool. for you. Um, you can insert tables, pictures, uh, diagrams, charts. Charts uses the full power of Excel um, for charts, and that's consistent across the Office applications. Uh, we've also taken other functionality that people spend a lot of time formatting, like um, headers, footers, uh, different kinds of page numbers, text boxes, which are things like um, boxed quotes or um, things that are you can do today that make your documents look really professional, yeah. but it's very difficult to figure out how to do it today. So here you click and pick what you want it to look like. So if I go up here and say I want to insert a table in the middle of this, insert table, I can drag out what I want the table to look like, get a little visual preview of that. Oh, it's previewing in the document. Right, as I oh. drag through. So I can kind of get it Sorry where I want it to be. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I've wanted this stuff for so long. <laughs> you can also use yeah. uh, table templates which we have pre-built common tables, simple table with subheads, a matrix table, double table, etc. Um, and you can also save your own tables as selections here. If I go back and drag out just a simple table, as soon as I do that, it's going to take me to the table tools. So in the past, we just had a, a toolbar button. We were kind of limited on the space that we could give you. And we always told you, hey, look, look at me. You can edit me now. And we give you that little table tool. But it, it ended up getting right on top of your content of your document. It was uh, distracting you from the work that you're trying to get done. So we use to now we use the same space as we use for the rest of the commands for the table tools. Yeah. So here's different styles. And of course, these are early um, designs. It's not the final designs. But these are all possible in uh, and each time it's, it's, it's changing live underneath. Live previewing, yes. So a live preview will give you an idea. So you can make good looking tables in Word today. It just takes a lot of time selecting the rows and the columns and the lines and futzing around with it. So and then trying it and seeing what the result what is. What it's going to look saying, like. Ah, I hate that color. Right, exactly. But, uh, but if you want to, you can spend time you know, on every individual thing um, and, and customize it yourself. But what we find is most documents have just black and white lines because it takes so much time to create a table today. So in this model, this kind of you know, better results faster or click and pick from uh, the list of formatting, it's much faster to get a better looking document. And you don't have to understand what all the individual commands that we call things. So something simple like a shadow, uh, in today's product, we would ask you what aspect ratio and what percent gradient. Now we just pick from a list of different kinds of 3D, and uh, there you go, or different kinds of shadows. And, and can, can I go in and customize each you of You absolutely can. The full power of Office is still there. Wow. And um, it isn't an extra click or anything. It's in this, It's the same number of clicks for the most part. Now can I come up with my own little temp? What do you call these things that come down when you... Galleries. Galleries, okay. Um, can I create my own gallery item? You can create your own gallery items. Some of the galleries allow you to create your own items. Uh, some of the galleries are fixed. Okay. Uh, developers can create add-ins that cr add galleries and, and have access to the capabilities of the rest of the UI, too. So they can present their functionality in a way that is 
easier for people to consume just like we have in the rest of the office application. And you said the secret word there, developers. Developers. And that's probably why the office team is coming to the PDC next month, next week, right? It, exactly. Because that's yeah. not usually a place that you see, uh, you know, Steven Sanoski and the office team show right. up. Right, right, right. So we're, we have a lot of new things to talk to people about. You can start, uh, you can create your own uh, functionality and add it to what, the ribbon. Um, you can create galleries of your functionality. You have a better chance of having it show up in the place where a user would find it in the way that we've organized it. So if you have tools that help people lay out the page or things that help people um, provide references in the document or do mailings, you can put it in the right place. And so it's not just a random command on the tools menu anymore. It's integrated as part of the experience. And you as a developer have the opportunity to put your commands in as first-class citizens with the rest of the office experience. I can imagine being an IT guy at, you know, Kodak or something, some big company or some small company, right? And go, man, this is so cool. I want to create my letterhead that has my color scheme, and I want to have my logo in there, and all the Absolutely. fun kinds of, you know, here's how to do business cards. So I could build all those things and put them into. You sure these can. Models. Also, Office has a new feature in it um, called Themes where we have, you can author themes for the documents across Word, Excel, and PowerPoint and control the visual appearance of those. And, and so the things that show up in the tables um, gallery or things that show up in the chart gallery or things that show up in the diagrams gallery would all be based off of the colors and styles that you've chosen. Okay. Uh, so you can control the look of your document for your corporation. Oh, well, keep going. <laughs> You've only shown me Word here. <laughs> I heard, I heard if you, somebody told me in the hallway, he said, when they show you Word, if you think Word is cool, wait until they show you PowerPoint. Show you PowerPoint. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll show you PowerPoint then. All right. <laughs> so that's a basic model, is what you saw there. And then uh, we'll go to PowerPoint. And PowerPoint, across the top, we have slide, insert, design. To the big part of working with your PowerPoint presentations, animations, slideshow, all the things you do to set up a slideshow, and then reviewing your slides. Wow. So I go to slides and I add slides. You know, again, the slides place is okay. where you're going to spend the majority of your time. It looks really familiar to people as the standard in formatting yeah. uh, commands. And I go in and use it like I normally do. That's why I can say uh, phase one, phase two, phase. Three, one more phase four, uh, but we have a lot of new features. So as I go in here and I say convert to IGX, which is our internal code name, uh, but it's really a, a diagramming tool, I can convert that text to any kind of a diagram. So if I choose um, a process diagram, automatically takes that and changes it. So then I have all the tools I can use to customize what I want this to look like. I can customize the type of the diagram. Um, I can change it to a, a circular diagram. Let's see if it's going up here. It's still loading. Yeah. Cycle diagrams, let's do that one. Do this. And then I can um, change the style. I can add, you can start seeing some of the new graphics capabilities that we have. It's Sexy. 3D globe. If you want to in, do the individual ones, yep. you, know, you can control the shadow, the 3D and the bevel, the rotation, the glow, soft edges, reflection. Those orange dots are just placeholders because we're not done. Yep. But and so are these. But they give you an idea of what those different things look like. So I can add a add a shadow to that. Um, if I go back, I can change the colors as well. And these again are the theme-based colors. So if I go back and uh, want to wow. change the line colors, the line colors I get are things that are going to be complementary with this diagram. So if I go down here and I add a fourth phase or a fifth phase, it's going to automatically update and redraw for me. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Let's close. Well, it, it is. <laughs> It is a pre-release piece of software. There we go. Software, <laughs> there we go. Yep. Uh, and so then it automatically adds a color that's complementary. Um, and I could keep going with that. So, um, But these live previews of these ideas of, of showing you the results that you can get with the application yep. in a new way, having you have to learn less of the details is really the key, key thing. So 
even things like animations. Right. Now go back to the background. Yeah, the animations are cool. Go back to the uh, backgrounds. Just backgrounds. Yeah. These are just and so if you okay, if you clicked on one of those, would it change? It will change. It will actually live preview. We're live previewing right now. So as I scroll through these, I can see what it would look like on the background without having to commit the change. So I get a chance to experiment and before I've decided and um, what it, what I want it to look like. And so as I change, the theme is changing. So you see the colors of the dots are also changing. So here's the one that's designed to go with that one. Here's the one that goes with that one. There's the one that goes with this one. So the new graphics engine enables all these capabilities across Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Diagramming is available in all three of the applications. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to have all sorts of new fun. <laughs> I, I thought I didn't like PowerPoint anymore. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. Um, so we, do we preview things like animations. Like uh, today, you'd have to go into slideshow mode to see what it looked like. Yeah. Um, you know, we have some animations on things like uh, uh, sound animations, things like that. So that will live preview for you too. That's cool. So you can get an idea without running the presentation what it would look like. Wow. Uh, so that's the overall model, and that's overall PowerPoint. So let's look at Excel real quick. So Excel, again, the first tab is the Sheet tab, and that's where you're going to spend the majority of your time. Let's put it in regular view here. Yeah. And so, so you still have the same old the Sheet tabs, tabs along there. the bottom. In fact, all the viewing things have now been moved to the bottom. At the, uh, that's a new, adds a new sheet for oh, you automatically. Yeah, it saves time okay. from having to go up here and do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, with the, all the view things and all the applications have been moved down to the bar here. So this is super useful in Excel. I can zoom out and zoom Ooh, in sorry. my spreadsheet. Go ahead and do that again. Oh, sure. Let's go back to 100. So I can zoom in or I can zoom out and I can see all the pages. Um, if I put it in normal view, let's try that. So you're just clicking and... and I'm just dragging the slider bar, and it allows me to zoom in and zoom out, which is really useful on a large spreadsheet. You can get way down in there to find all the different cells that you want to get to and navigate around. It also works in PowerPoint and in Word. In long doc for long documents in Word, you can zoom out and see all the individual pages, and so you can quickly navigate between the different pages by zooming. Um, Excel also has a new view uh, for page layout view. So... A lot of people want to print the results of what they put in their spreadsheet. It's not just a calculation engine for them. So the new print view uh, helps them to lay out the page and get something that will look good on the printer from the very beginning and take advantage of these new graphics engines to create great charts and diagrams, et cetera. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to regular view. Uh, so across the top we have sheet, yep. insert which you've seen before, but the emphasis again is a little different because you know, things like inserting sheets and rows and columns are important, more important in Excel. Um, laying out the page, everything you can do to customize how you want it to lay out. Uh, formulas, working with all the different formulas. And here you can see how we're going to be integrating help. Um, I think it's in text. So as I drag over my formulas, uh, this is placeholder text, but instead of having uh, just a little tool tip that tells you the name of the formula. We're going to give you enough information um, that you should be able to use the formula without having to go to help to look it up. Yep. So instead of having to remember the words that we use for something and then type them again into the help engine, you can get them directly from the user interface. So it should save a lot of steps for people. Um, let's see. Data. If, if you're writing a formula, does it help? You know, if you start typing equals, does it do anything different? Um, it has the same helper text that we had before for auto-completing the formula. Okay. Um, data. Yep. And review. Reviewing your spreadsheet. Yep. But if I go back to sheet here, um, let's see if I can put in a, a range of text. Is doing pivot tables any different than before? It is different. There's a whole lot of features in Office 12 that you're not going to be seeing here. That because this is basically uh, just a demonstration of the UI. Yeah. But there's a whole lot of new. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I guess I didn't pick it up. There's a whole lot of new things in here. 
So let's see, let's copy that for him. And then that's there we go. We get some data in here. Yep. Um, and so some of the new features of this, what you saw before on trying to format some of the objects in, in PowerPoint and in Word, in Excel we take those same sorts of results oriented or better results faster ideas into calculations. So if I go into uh, conditional formatting, I can do highlight the cells, top 10 cells, visualize cells, um, but in the t in say top 10 cells, I can say here's the top 10 cells or I can live preview with top 50 cell percent of cells or the top 30 percent of cells and it will automatically uh, do it for me without having to commit the change so I can model and, and play with the data without making a permanent change to the cells. Um, same with conditional formatting on visualizing cells, I can add a three color gradient so it automatically tells me red, yellow, green, orange. Ah, oh, you're that. talking. I love that kind of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you drive your boss nuts. <laughs> well, they automatically want to know what all those red numbers are. If those really should be red or not red. Um, uh, some of the new things we have too is a form, uh, format as table. Again, you get a preview of the different kinds of tables that you can get. Yep. Uh, I'll pick one here. It'll automatically go and format that thing for me um, into the different colors, and then I can update the colors and change it to whatever I want it to look like. Um, another feature we've added is watch these column headers up here. It has column one, two, three, four. Yep. As I scroll down and those come off the screen. Why isn't it working? It didn't work. <laughs> it's a bug. They're supposed to come become part of the ABC. Uh, it usually works. I don't know why I didn't work. All right, we'll have to cut that part out. No, you don't. You don't cut <laughs> <laughs> <It'll> um, work. <laughs> and so, um, let's see, what else can I show you? Charting. We can do a couple things with charting. So let's, and charting's still way in progress, so okay. um, you have to bear with me here. So let's see, let's just do one, two, three, four, five, and, um, and then we'll do five. Insert chart, and let's type the bar chart, something simple. And so when I get the chart from the data, I can uh, you know, move it wherever I want on the page to help me with my page layout. Yep. But I get the tools for the chart, and so I can start playing around with what I want the chart layouts to be. Yep. So I can look and say, I want the title up here um, and the legend down there. I want this style, I want these different formats, so I can go ahead and make it a, a 3D format. Um, so I can change the type on the fly uh, to a bar chart or, or from a bar chart to a pie chart or any other number of different kinds of charts. If I want to play with the individual layout, like update what it, where the legend goes or the title or the data labels, all that is here and you just pick and click it. So today working with charts, it's very difficult to get the selection just right and have all these layers and so we've made it a lot easier by showing that again the results that you can get instead of having to futz with it so it should be uh, help make it much more accessible for customers to to get what they want to have happen in their document right what about Outlook? Outlook so I'm glad you asked <laughs> that's Outlook. the app that I spend <laughs> 14 spend hours a, a day time, <laughs> um, Outlook is um, well, when we developed the model, we developed it mainly for authoring. So um, we really thought about you know, the task of creating a document and what commands you need when you're creating a document and what commands you need when you're done with the document or you want to do something else with the document. So we didn't do it originally with Outlook in mind. It was mostly thinking about Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, except for in the area of, of mail note. Um, so you're you know, writing a mail message or, or reading a mail message, which is exactly, in Office 12 will be Word or is Word today as well, but will be the, the only editor going forward. So, How many um, new features are in Office? I have, uh, in this release, there are so many new features. I can't even, I can't even tell you. I'll, this is a huge release for Office. It's um, probably 
the biggest Office release ever for new features. All right. Okay, so when I go into the Canvas area or, or the, the shell area of Outlook hasn't changed that much, although there are a whole bunch of new features around calendaring and contacts and tasks and everything that I am uh, I'm not going to, what, all my reminders came up, that I'm not going to show you today because yeah. otherwise it would be a, all about the Outlook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will show you what the mail note looks like. Okay. Um, get my reminders turned off. I've been on vacation and so uh, all my reminders came up. Let's see. So I'll do a new message. And so here we have the two tabs at the top. This is a debugging thing. So we have the write tab and the insert tab. So yep. write is where I spend all my time creating my document. Um, and then insert is uh, how I can get things into my document. And then you'll get those contextual tabs that we saw before about help, helping you um, do things with those objects. Right. And then same with read notes. So when you read a note, um, let's see, oh, mail from Judy. Uh, when you is you have all the things to help you with reading, replying, etc. And then when I hit reply, it takes me into the read note model. And so for all of the authoring parts of Outlook, they will use the ribbon, but the but yep. the shell doesn't. What's the first initial studies with the... It's been super encouraging. So, um, scary, actually. So are those people saying that anymore? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> are they saying, oh, saying, I finally know something new to It's yeah. been really fun because you yeah. watch it, you really test it, like, oh, I always wondered if it could do that, or I've always wanted to do that feature, or, or um, you know, just simple things like um, uh, text, um, putting text in an Excel spreadsheet, like copying and pasting and having to go in the cells instead of just into one cell, you know, text to column. So um, it's been really fun to see people um, feel more powerful using Office. And yeah. so uh, we've taken out a lot of the auto capabilities or the auto features where things would just pop up at you and, and really made a, a concerted effort over predictability um, in the product, so it does what you so say there's no you want clippy, it to do. There's no, there's no clippy. No, no. It, you tell the program what you want it to do, and and uh, we'll do that. So uh, that's the idea. Very cool. Um, anything else I should be asking you? Um, <laughs> <There's> you want, <laughs> this is my first shot at it. Do you want to uh, talk to like, oh. custom, about customization? Yeah. So in the old product, command bars were super customizable. Um, We've done, a, again, looking at the data and talking with customers, we found they all used to do the same sorts of things to it. Yeah. They'd either mo remove things because there's too many things on the screen all at once, uh, just kind of contextualize it for themselves, um, or they would uh, add the command that they use very often. But a lot of times they didn't want to spend time customizing, they just wanted to fix little problems. So we fixed a lot of the customization issues just by reorganizing the command set. Um, into these contexts that you work in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I always customize every time I set up a new computer. I add uh, read all messages to my toolbar because I do. That's so the one much. you always do. Yeah. So, so exactly. we still have that kind of customization in here. So there's this little toolbar at the top. I've already added bullets and numbering up there. Okay. Um, but I can go ahead and customize with any command. I can either go to the full list by going and saying I want to customize this, or I can just right click on any button and add it. So there I can add added it. Um, I can also toggle this thing to the full width, and so I can put as many toolbar things up here as I want. Right. I could also collapse the ribbon if I want to and just work in this kind of a, a collapsed toolbar mode. Um, but I'll go ahead and put it back up there and bring the ribbon back. And so you do still have customization. Another thing that we're doing um, to help Boy, I get a lot of email. Ah, welcome to Microsoft. <laughs> so I, um, if I type in something like that. If you ever want to work at Microsoft, you better get used to a lot of email. <laughs> yes, especially when you've been on vacation. So here I type in uh, the quick brown fox, and as I select, yeah. I get what we call, internally, we call it the floaty, which is the most common commands that people do on selected the text. The floaty, you call it? We call it the floaty. And it's okay. a very shy little toolbar that as I move towards it, it gets more solid. As I move away from it, it gets more faint, oh, and cool. then it just goes away. And so when I reselect, it comes back, it gets more solid, it goes away. So it's a little shy little thing. If you want to do a text command, it's there. If you don't, it goes away quickly. So Because there's a limited amount of things you can do when you have selected text. 
the big benefit of that is when I'm in some other mode, so like say in a page layout, and I notice I have a spelling error or I want to change something to bold, I don't have to go back to the right tab to get it. In fact, the right click menu has been redesigned so you have access to all the things that you would have on that right tab uh, yep. for every object that's in your document. Um, it also really helps on large monitors. Because if you're way, if you have a giant monitor and your text is all the way down at the bottom, it's a long way to travel to go up and get all those commands. So the text commands that you're going to be using when you're typing are there at your fingertips. Can you pull that up with a key command? Yes, there will be a key command. Uh, there's keyboard access for everything. I didn't show you that. So right. if I, uh, all the control keys continue to work just like they did before. So control B, control I, all the things that people know um, and use most often. Now the keyboard, uh, things that navigate the keyboard, the alt commands, uh, we have a new system for that. Though we do have a compatibility mode. If you know them all and yeah. you want to work that way, you can still work that way. And you turn that on the office options. But here, we put up a little overlay that tells you what key to press to go get the thing that you want. So if I, here I just pressed Alt, if I want to be in the right tab, to get into the themes area, I press D, and that will give me the overlays and all the things I can press there. Oh, wow. And so this should make it, does make it a lot more accessible and easier to use the keyboard because you'll have to remember the sequences, you're learning the sequences as you're doing it and not hunting for those little underlines. It makes it a lot easier to see. Yeah. And Tell it's me, also fewer key clicks. There's, uh, because uh, Office is used by so many people, there's people who use the product who can't see, who can't hear. Absolutely. Tell me about accessibility. Accessibility, well, the uh, person who is responsible for accessibility across the Office is on my team. And, okay. and she works with all the accessibility vendors to create tools that help people use Office. And we've been working with them now for a while. I'm making sure that there's tools available when Office 12 comes out. So like the screen um, readers? And screen readers. Yeah, Jaws or whatever. Exactly. Huh? Um, and you know, we'll meet some more at PDC, I'm sure, yeah. and, and learn some more about um, kinds of things that they're trying to do and make it accessible to them. Uh, we have also have you know, people with uh, disabilities on campus that help us as well. So we had an intern this summer, she's been back for two summers now, who's blind working in Outlook, and she really helped us a lot with the design of what we're doing here and making sure it works. In fact, uh, she was really excited when she saw the diagramming stuff, well, saw in a relative yeah. term, the diagramming stuff in uh, PowerPoint because it was the first time she'd ever made graphics in her life. So using that tool where she could type the text in and then turn it into a circle diagram or um, a line process diagram. She'd never been able to make graphics before, so wow. it was really empowering for her. It was awesome to see that. It was it's really rewarding. Anything else? Let me... <laughs> what else? <laughs> Where's my pain in office? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can give me all your little nits. What well, and Shell there? Niners can obviously write, you know, what, oh, about sure. this, what about this, and we'll Absolutely. come back and do another interview if we have to. Yeah, sure I'm sure will. I forgot a million things, and I didn't demo uh -oh. the applications themselves, just mostly uh -huh. the UI, but there is a lot of new things in there. Uh, a lot of features that we wouldn't have been able to do without this UI redesign because they would have been more features just untouched and hard to find. So yeah. this really puts it out there. Spell checker. Is, oh, how, how's the grammar? Has the grammar checker changed? or? Again, you're talking to the wrong person. The okay. word team would know. Right. I, I know that we work with uh, an external vendor on the proofing tools. Okay. So I'm not quite sure. Okay. We'll, we'll uh, get around the team and... Find some yeah, there's lots of people. I need, talk a, to. I need a, definitely a, a, some sort of tool that answers my email for me. That was <laughs> maybe <laughs> a Office, uh, the I next version of Office. I definitely need that tool. <laughs> I hear, see, it's your birthday on the window here. Um, <laughs> that was to. actually a little while ago. Okay. But, yeah, we won't talk about which one it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy birthday. Thank you. Well, thanks for spending some time sure. and showing us around the Office UI. It was very fun. Uh, it's going to be a fun Let week for you, I guess. Let me know what you think. It's, well, yeah, I'm sure, it's going to be a really fun week. We've, I'm sure uh, the people, when they first see it at the PDC, are going to have sure. a visceral reaction to it. There's our, a, you know, there's always, whenever there's a change, there's always, change is always hard, even good change. Yeah. How, how many hours do you think it takes for somebody to really get used to it and, and say, man, I, I just cannot deal, deal with the old way of doing it anymore? Well, we just got done, so we don't have huge num amounts of data. We have I early indications. Um, we're just working on getting that data now. Yeah. It's kind of a chicken and egg problem. You have to have the product done in order to test it. But we've been testing it in individual elements all along the way. Uh, most people, for the majority of the features they use, 
get up and going right away um, because the right tab looks so similar to standard and formatting, the tools that they're already mostly using. Yeah. Um, and there's also a document quality measurement that we've never done before where the documents that get created are, are, are better than they were before because of the new graphics engine or the new ways that you can lay things out in the application. So um, most people can get going immediately. To learn it all, it's going to take probably a couple of weeks to get real familiar back again with what, what, how you knew it before. Yeah. But we're measuring that curve right now and trying to do everything we can to make it shorter. We're providing new migration tools, um, you know, where did it go kind of, uh, you know, if you used to know this command, this is where it went, um, tutorials, customizable training materials for corporations so they can take training and customize it and do it for their own companies. And we're trying to do everything we can to help people move um, forward as painlessly as possible. Yep. All the old add-ins will continue to work um, in Office. They'll go on a tab called add-ins. They'll migrate seamlessly across. Uh, we're spending a lot of time on compatibility, making sure that all works and doing everything we can. So I'd love to hear more ideas about how we can make the transition easier because yeah. we'll do it. When you open, um, maybe I'll ask Brian this because the you know, the formats that have been changing, but when you open an old Word doc uh, uh, or an old Excel spreadsheet or an old PowerPoint in this, does it do anything different than if you had a new doc? Yes, it will tell you that you're opening an older version and, and be, you put you automatically into compatibility mode okay. and you'll get a little yellow bar across the top here okay. uh, that will tell you that you're in a compatibility mode and then you can choose to upgrade your document then and enable all the features or the features that you can't use because of file format will be grayed out. So you Very can't good. get yourself in trouble, or we can't get you into trouble, I guess is a better way to put it. Very good. <laughs> Anything else we need to know about um, the land of office? I am super excited to see uh, how people use this and um, how they can make better looking documents faster using Office 12. Thank you very much. <laughs>